Hey YouTubers, guitar lovers and haters and skeptics of the world out there. Yeah, man. I uh I could have done this video but it would have been like a long long video. But uh this is my early 60s Gibson Hummingbird and I replaced a uh, a saddle, the saddle on it. And uh, the old one got freaking worn out on me, man. I don't know if you can see that, but it starts to end, get the string indentions and everything. And actually, this is, you know, the original saddle. I don't know if you can see in the center right there. It's Graph Tech. I don't know if you can see that. But this is a Graph Tech. From the factory. And. Uh, I. I messed up a few years ago. I, I was just dealing with it. I had just too much string buzz man. Because I took this. I wanted low action man. Almost as low as my electric guitars. And it was a big mistake man. And. Uh, I just dealt with the string buzz. Because I'm a heavy strummer man. And certain songs I'm hearing string buzz drive me nuts. I'm losing tone. I just dealt with it. But I took this, I took the the height too far. And uh, so that was another reason to change it out. But anyway, what I really wanted to show you, if you have a Gibson Hummingbird, bird, this is the uh, saddle you want to get. It's the GraphTech uh, Tusk PQ-9400. 9400-CO and uh, that's the saddle you want and it's not going to be a perfect fit you're going to uh, have to sand it down and it's almost there you know but you're just going to have to sand out the edges and the thickness and the height on, on it and uh, I, you know I already had uh, the strings are off and this was all taped three layers of masking tape you know for when I'm pulling it out. And also, you want to use, do not use pliers, man. Get you get good bull nose pliers. And don't get cheap ones, man. Because the cheap ones don't grip. You want a good bull nose, you want to spend just a couple extra bucks, you know. And you can get them in all different sizes, man. But this is good enough. And, uh, you know, you're going to tape that, that bridge down. I put three layers of masking tape, and then you just walk walk this out. Do not go back and forth because you can snap it, and then you're, you're going to be flush with the the bridge, and you're going to have to pick it out, man. And also, you'll waddle out. You'll make you can make the hole bigger. And you don't want to do that. So you want to go side to side, and and just walk that out of there, and it'll come out. And if it's glued, you're going to have to heat this up with a heat lamp if you can adjust the heat. Or an old light bulb on a, you know, one of them lights, the aluminum uh, lights, you know, aluminum cover. And uh, you want to cover the whole guitar with cardboard, and, uh, take your cardboard and trace out your new saddle. Cut that, just that saddle out. Put the cardboard down, tape it down. Protect everything so you don't melt, mess up your finish or especially melt out your pick, pick guard, you know. But yeah, use the cardboard and uh, that'll put direct uh, heat onto your bridge and you can take the bridge out just like you were taking out your frets, heat, heat, heating up the frets, frets to weaken the glue, you know. And uh, that'll work for you. I've seen some guys also struggle uh, sometimes and they would create like a Polish steam bath man but you're talking just a couple drops i mean very i mean not to where you can't even see the water man and you there you can use like a, a thin tip bottle man and i mean just a little you probably just use your finger you know to get it down some in there to create some kind of steam to make it a little bit hotter you know but it should come off with just the the heat you know and uh remember you get the bull nose walk it out and what I use to 
to sand my bridge for my saddle. <laughs> I'm used to sand bridge, man, for electric guitars. But I, this is what I use for when I do my uh, fret leveling. And this is last for years. This is this is a cut paper I've ha had on here. I use this for my hardwood flooring in between coats. I put a, like a 3M pad uh, uh, on the buffer, and then I would put uh, two pieces of this over the pad because it's sticky, you know, and I would fold it over my buffer pad, two layers, one on each end, and then the buffer would go around to the floor. But this is the sharpest paper in the world, man. It's uh, 60 bucks a roll. I call it a cut paper. You can get it like uh, 100 grit, 150 grit, 180 grit, uh, 220 grit. And uh, this is last for years. I've done so many f uh, fret leveling jobs with this, and it's still sharp as hell. I've, I also use this paper to sand my motorcycle frames, the aluminum frames. When I'm doing the polishing and everything, this is the first thing I use is this kind of paper. And I can cut half, just half of this, fold this over, and that piece folded over would do a whole entire motorcycle frame. That's how sharp this paper has been. But that's not what we're talking about. So when you get your new saddle, you're going to have to do your, your filing. And like this old one, you know, I freaking took it down way too much, man. So... I like, uh, I want to go back to stock, 764 and 564 is what this was from day one, you know, and it, it sounds beautiful, man, great tone and everything, and some guys might go lower, I don't want to get in that argument, man, I'm a 764, 564, I'm acoustic, period, I don't, it doesn't matter what you want, that's your preference, it, you don't have to go what I, I want, you know. It's just what I like, you know, 764, 564, and, uh, but yeah, so the first thing you want to do is uh, do your thickness, you know, and you want to go evenly, you know, on your, you can put this on a, a, your bench or table or whatever, your sandpaper and do the same, but I just use this, but I'm pr even pressure, middle and ends. And I'm going back and forth and I'm counting. And I'm doing both sides. And doing the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, and just flip it over. And the reason being is because your B string, you see that ha there's a little uh, spot right here. It's There's like an indention here. And then there's like a 32nd of a ledge right here and you don't that's why you don't want to just do one side because some guys will think they, they want to keep that tusk name on there on the new one you know you don't want to do that and uh because you're, you're taking this edge right here and making it too thin and that's going to create your string to groove in quicker and everything and you'll throw off your intonation and stuff like that too you could a little bit you know but you want to you want to Keep this all even, man. So you're going to do both sides. And then, uh, you know, I'll take a pencil line where I'm going to start with. I, I make a nice, perfect, I'll take a straight edge and do a, a pencil line. Use a pencil line when I'm doing my height. And then same thing. I got pressure in the, in the middle and on the ends. You know, and I'm going counting. You can go in circles and count or back and forth. I like going back and forth, but you got to turn it around and, and do it. You know, you'll see on your line when you're going forward, it's going to cut more than on the back. You know, even though you're pressing evenly, it still ends up going more on on the uh, front side. You know, so you want the same thing. Count all your strokes and go evenly. And that pencil line will help you. And then what I do is I only, when I want to check the first time, after I get my thickness, I'll go through that, you know, do the thickness, same thing, you know, get your thickness. And then, you know, on the ends, 
you got to do them evenly and you can either take it round how the ends are round you can go back and forth but count everything's even but what I do is I go straight first I go one two three four five six then I do my round round over and do it evenly man do it evenly and it all comes out perfect okay so once you do all that and get your thickness and everything you're going to check your height and I'll just use my E-string basey and my trebly to check my height after it's, you know, a snug fit. You want it a snug fit, not, not too tight, not too loose. Perfect. You know, nice, snug, perfect fit, man. And first time I'll check it, I'll put the string, just these two strings on and then check it. Usually I, I'm not going to get it on the first time, you know, and then I'll take them back off. And I'll have that line on again, you know, that pencil line on there. And usually on the second time, I'll get it, man, because I, I know where I'm at on the first one. And I'm like, okay, I, I need to go about another 264s or something, you know, to get where I want to be. And, like, this one was only two two tries to get my height, you know. But that's how I, I, I do all that, I just wanted to show you all this, and uh, but mainly, you know, show you in case you're struggling to find out the the right uh, saddle for your hummingbird. And uh, I covered the whole damn guitar because I know I'm making mistakes. Something happens. Something falls on it. I scratch it like I did with my. Uh, Wilshire doing the Allen wrench on my truss rod and it got stuck and pulled it out. And that's how my uh, headstock got scratched. And from now on, every guitar I do is I'm taping the center of the freaking headstock. I don't care. You know, I ain't taking any chances. But uh, I hope I covered everything to help you out, man. I could have done this video from start to finish on me doing it but it would have been four times as long as what it is now you know it's a long video right now but if i forgot anything just shoot me a comment and i'll help you out and uh i don't think i forgot anything i'm just trying to think i think i covered everything but just just make sure you file this all down evenly, like I, I told you, and, and and use them bullnose. Do not use pliers, man. Some guys probably say, "Well, I use pliers for years." You know, but yeah, you get away with it, but that's kind of a half-ass way. It's better to use the bullnose, man. Not, I'm not saying you're half-ass, but to me, you know, I'd rather use the right tool. <laughs> that's guaranteed, man. And uh, side to side, do not go back and forth. But I think I covered everything. It's, it's kind of late right now. It's like after 1.30 a.m. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel and watching my channel. And, and uh I enjoy your comments and the tips I get from everybody and and uh, you know we can all learn from each other and if any you see any of my past videos if I make a mistake let me know man because some of my old videos I might have said something stupid man I don't know I was back in the beginning way in the beginning I had a my channel was Elvis Pretzel before like in 2014 and like four years ago, I deleted everything. I had like 220 videos and I got pissed off at the world. But I was Elvis Pretzel and there was a, there's an Elvis Pretzel on YouTube and I didn't want to end up getting him causing problems saying, hey, I'm the Elvis Pretzel. But really, I'm the real Elvis Pretzel. I was named that on Chicago Land TV, man, in a talent contest. And I used to be a good guitar player, man. But I don't want to get, I, I, I rebelled against my parents in the eighth grade uh, or freshman year and traded my Gibson Les Paul heritage in for a double bass drum set. And I was a drummer ever since, man. And 
but I've been back in guitar trying to get back and I'll never be who I was back in the day. But uh, I was able to hear any song. I don't care what it was and I'd play it, man. I started at the age of three and got on TV at the age of six when I turned six. Right before I was six, well, was 67, I was born. 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Yeah, it was March 23rd and my birthday's in June. So right before my sixth birthday, I was on TV already. But uh, I I knew all the notes on the fretboard, every chord, and I don't anymore. You know, I, I, I got a life, <laughs> oh, had kids, a business, and just stayed as a drummer. I, I enjoyed drumming through my life, and I, I had a lot of stress being Elvis Pretzel, and I don't want to get into that. But, uh, yeah, if I forgot anything, let me know, and, uh, I'll help you out if, you know, but mainly I just want to show you what, what is the proper saddle for this, because a lot of guys might be like, not, they don't have the micrometer to measure the perfect length and the thickness and everything, you know. But, uh, yeah, this 90% chance, this, this is going to, 95% chance is going to be the one for you, you know. Some come in three inches, but that's going to be a different style, like, maybe like the style uh, the world of Matias has, got the bigger bridge and all, that might have the three inch, I don't know. But these hummingbirds, they're, I can't remember the freaking exact length, it's, it's under three inches, two something. I can't remember. But yeah, uh, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video, man. I, I'm going to finish learning that uh, Joe Walsh tune down, and I got the uh, chord, normal chords down, but there's a bunch of bar chords that he does. He takes it down the neck, man, on this on this one, uh, one part, and... Uh, or several parts, he's going down the neck in different, same keys, but going down the neck, you know, and, uh, it's kind of complicated for me right now, I just ain't 100% into it, tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll be on it all day, and i probably have it out tomorrow, but if not, maybe the next day, but yeah, I'll catch you guys later, man, sorry for the long video, I just want to maybe help you out, and show you how I do my saddles, and everything, I'll see you guys later, man. Elvis left the building.